Here's a quick introduction to limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes. And you guys have seen horizontal asymptotes before, but I've pointed out that any kind of asymptote is really a limit statement. And so without this technology and terminology of limits, we don't really have a precise knowledge. So now we can get that. So I've just drawn the sketch of a function. We're not going to worry about what kind of formula would produce this function. And I just want to point out, it has a vertical asymptote. And it has a couple of horizontal asymptotes. So these guys over here on the left and over here up here on the right, these are both horizontal asymptotes. And what does it mean to be a horizontal asymptote? Well, it means that, like, what, what, what did it mean to be a vertical asymptote? It meant that when x got really close to some finite value, like say this is like x equals 1, when x gets really close to 1, the y values get arbitrarily large. So here, we put in finite inputs. OK, and it's not like we get really infinite outputs, literally but we get huge outputs. With horizontal asymptotes, the situation is reversed because x is horizontal, that's input, y is vertical, that's output for a function. Here, the situation is we're going way, way off. Let's see, we can't really go, well, we can go all the way to the edge of the screen here. Here, we're putting in really, really large x's. So we're putting in huge inputs and we're getting some nice, sort of stable, finite, manageable output. And so the, the roles are quite reversed, and that's important. It still has to do with infinities in a way, but it's we who are putting in the huge inputs. It's we who are taking x going off to infinity. Okay. So the way we're going to say that, let's squeeze it in up here, we're going to say this as Let's see, oh, I need a value here. Let's say this is 1 and this is minus 1. We're going to go ahead and say, I want to know what happens when I go really far to the right. I'm going to take x off to plus infinity. And often we just write that without the plus. But I want to emphasize the plus. The limit as x goes to plus infinity of f of x. So this is a very big difference between vertical asymptotes and, and um, horizontal. We put the infinity in here. Here, we would take the limit as x goes to 1, and we would discover willy-nilly that the output is blowing up to plus or minus infinity. And so the, a the infinity would come in as the answer to the problem. Here it comes in as our input to the problem. Limit as x goes to plus infinity f of x equals, in this case, it's equal to 1. That's that y value. That says that y equals 1 is a horizontal asymptote. OK. Now, over here, we decide to say, well, what, ha what happens if we go really far to the left? In this case, we see that as the x values get super, super, super far to the left, they approach closer and closer. Well, they're supposed to be getting closer and closer anyway, to this line, y equals minus 1. And so this says the output values, as x goes to minus infinity, f, as x is a really huge negative number, way far to the left, the output, the trend in the output values, that's what this always means is minus 1. They're getting closer and closer to minus 1. And so y equals minus 1 is going to be also a horizontal asymptote. OK. So that gets at a lot of things I want to emphasize for the intro, is this, this switch between input and output, that um, we are putting the infinities in, and then we're trying to see, is there a finite number coming out? Um, before I erase this, let's see. Um, now, I think I'm going to erase this and just sh show you a couple things that are important. First of all, that nobody said that any function ever has to have an asymptote. There's plenty of functions that don't have asymptotes. So for example, the limit as x goes to plus infinity of x squared. That does not approach some nice finite number. That just keeps going up. And it has a limit, but it's not a number. It's infinity. 
And just because we asked the question doesn't mean the answer to the question is yes. So there's plenty of things where you're going to calculate this limit, and the answer will be, no, there isn't an asymptote. Just because I just because I put in limit doesn't mean there is one. And in fact, here, it's the same in both directions, that they're both going to plus infinity. This is a very nice statement. This is a very nice way to summarize the end behavior. So that's the more general term, is we're analyzing the end behavior of these functions. And some one version of end behavior is a horizontal asymptote, and then some functions don't have a horizontal asymptote. So that's one thing that's very important. Or we could have something like this. We could have the sine function. The limit as x goes to infinity of sine x, that just doesn't exist. It wiggles. We've seen kind of contrived examples for infinite wiggliness for finite limits. This is a totally uncontrived example. This is one of the simplest, most important functions out there. Well, it's one of the most important functions out there. And there's no trend but in terms of the values. It always keeps oscillating between minus 1 and 1. Definitely not a horizontal asymptote. Now, the distinction between this example not existing and some of the other ones might lead you to the wrong conclusion, though. So let me show you one more thing. So the question would be, here's a horizontal dotted line. Let's say we have this function that keeps crossing and recrossing, but settles down and gets closer and closer to the, let's say, y equals 2. And so the question is, questions are, one, is it true that the limit as x goes to plus infinity of this function, f of x, equals 2? and is y equals 2 a horizontal asymptote? And you might want to pause and sort of think about your own version of your answer to that question. And the answer to both questions is a resounding yes. And that's actually counterintuitive to a lot of people. The reason is that your intuition with like rational functions and the places you've seen asymptotes before and your intuition coming from vertical asymptotes is your subconscious might well have declared a, a horizontal asymptote to be a line that the graph does not cross. And that's just not what a horizontal asymptote is. It's true that a vertical asymptote, it happens to be true that a vertical asymptote can't be crossed by a function, but that's mainly because of the vertical line test. It's not really because of anything about infinities. It's just that if I put a, this vertical dotted line here, and it doesn't, ha and it's blowing up to infinity, then it's not gonna, gonna sort of finitely cross it. Okay, vertical asymptotes are very, very different because of that switch of vertical and horizontal and the nature of functions. So um, this, it's true that a function doesn't cross its vertical asymptote, but that's not the essential thing. We now know what the essential thing is. It's a limit statement. Similarly, for a horizontal asymptote, this function. If I go way off here, it's getting very, very, very close to 2 and happens not to equal 2. So what? But it's getting close to it. That's, that's the limit statement. This function, also, the values, the trend in the output values for very large x of this function is 2. They're getting closer and closer to 2. And so you'd say, yes, y equals 2 is a horizontal asymptote here. It's just a more interesting one. But as long as it's getting closer and closer and not doing sine x and wiggling and never settling down, then this is a horizontal asymptote. And this infinite limit does exist, and it's equal to 2. So that's an important uh, pitfall I wanted to get out right away. All right, that's a good intro.